Welcome back, I'm That Chemist, and today we're going to talk about why you might want to go to conferences. So what are conferences? Conferences are planned events where scientists from a given field discuss some of their recent published work. Once in a while, scientists will also present their unpublished work. However, sometimes that causes anxiety, and you can get worried that maybe someone's going to try and rip off your ideas. Usually, because it's your most exciting stuff, people will include one or two slides about their unpublished work, but for the most part, you try to only talk about your published work. So usually, conferences will focus around a central theme. This theme could be a very broad theme, or it could be more focused. So some examples of ones that I've intended include the Canadian Chemistry Conference and Exhibition, CCCE, where lots of different chemists from Canada as well as internationally will all come and attend this national conference. It's national because it's for all of Canada. Now I've also attended the Banff Symposium on Organic Chemistry. This is an organic chemistry specific conference where typically grad students are the only ones in attendance aside from invited speakers who are professors that are well known in their field. Now another conference that I've attended is the Winter Fluorine Conference and this is a conference that mainly focuses on fluorine as the name would imply and this has every area of fluorine chemistry from analytical stuff to biological applications as well as uh, drug discovery. So these conferences are a good opportunity to learn about different areas of science outside of your own expertise. Sometimes they can focus on specifically your area of expertise, but usually because there's people from different areas, you're going to get exposed to some stuff that's outside of your knowledge area. And so there's some different types of conferences. Some of them are specific to undergrads. These are usually poster uh, conferences, undergraduate poster conferences. Some of them are research symposia for graduate students, such as the Banff Symposium on Organic Chemistry that I was mentioning before. And there's also institutional, provincial, national, or international conferences. And usually the institutional ones will be the smallest, where you'll have grad students and undergrads from a given institution presenting. And as you get to a larger and larger scale conference, typically more and more people are in attendance. It's also possible that these conferences can be focused on a narrow topic, such as natural products chemistry, or let's say physical chemistry, or they could be interdisciplinary. So such as like just an ACS general meeting, for instance. And so there's several different reasons you might want to attend a conference. One reason is that it's good to travel. It's a good opportunity to do stuff that's productive, but also see the world. It also breaks up the monotony of grant writing or lab work, depending on which stage you're at. And it's also a really good opportunity to meet new people. It's also worth mentioning that it's a chance for you to become educated about other areas of science outside of your own area of expertise. And usually if you're attending a conference, there's something interesting to listen to at any given time. It can also be a good time to catch up with peers if you've met people at previous conferences or if you are meeting up with a colleague who might have moved on to a different institution. So I would say overall, it's a really fun experience. I think most of my best memories are from attending conferences and there's just a lot of really cool things going on. I, I would say meeting other scientists and talking about research is kind of like what normal people, aka normies, would imagine it would be like to talk to someone famous, except if you talk to someone famous, you don't have anything in common with them. However, if you're a scientist and you talk to a famous scientist, you almost certainly do have something to talk to them about, and you'll have something that's worth their time if you're uh, a good researcher. So there's several different types of presentations at conferences. Usually there will be plenary lectures, invited lectures, contributing lectures, and poster presentations. Now, plenary lecture is kind of like where you're a big cheese in the field, and so they invite you, they wine and dine you, and you get your own big dedicated session, usually dedicated just to you, where people can come and attend. Um, sometimes conferences that are really big will still have several streams where plenary lectures occur, but in uh, medium to small size conferences, all of the plenary lectures will be a standalone event that you're expected to attend. Now, invited lectures are basically like you're someone in the field that the people organizing the conference know, you've been working in the field for some time, and they kind of want you to be there. And so being an invited speaker is an honor, and it's usually something that's listed on CVs for that reason. Now, oftentimes you still want to attend a conference, but maybe you're earlier uh, in your career, maybe you haven't spent as much time in the field, but you have really exciting stuff that you want to share with people. So this is a really good time to present your research. You can also do this as a postdoc or a grad student, although it's certainly less common uh, than what you'd see with professors. Usually it's professors, but occasionally you'll have a couple postdocs or grad students. Now, poster presentations are appropriate for postdocs and grad students and even undergraduate students, and very occasionally you'll see a professor presenting their research on a poster. Usually this is if it's like a last minute submission to the conference, um, uh, and occasionally it's it just has to happen that way. So if you're an undergrad or a grad student, this is usually what you'll do when you attend your first conference. 
and this is a good chance to talk about your research and get new ideas from people in the field. Normally, if this is your first conference, there is a lot going on and it'll be really overwhelming, but it can be a really good experience even if you've never been before. It just takes a bit of adapting to get used to it. So there's some other sessions usually available. Oftentimes people from industry will feature reagents, such as this poster here for Fluolead, which is a nucleophilic fluorinating agent. And people will usually have special sessions that you can attend where they can try and convince you why their products are the best or why you should buy th stuff through them. Usually they'll have like freebies and stuff. You can get swag, as they call it, which is, uh, is always fun as well. Oftentimes there will also be companies that run social events, and these are probably the most fun part of conferences in my opinion. Here is uh, a wristband for a Brooker event from a previous conference. Now, I love those because they're so much fun. You get to have a really fun time with other researchers and talk about chemistry unfiltered and it's it's the most fun part of conferences in my experience if you've had good conference experiences at social events please comment down below i would love to read your stories so you might be wondering how do you finance attending a conference and so usually universities and uh principal investigators can and should fund your research research and that includes your attendance to conferences. Now, oftentimes they find it harder to justify why they should fund for you to go to a place to go to a conference, but it's like really, really valuable. It's really valuable in terms of your education. It's really valuable in terms of increasing the value of your skills because you're meeting other people in the same field. You're getting exposed to new information that you wouldn't if you were just sitting on your butt in the lab or in your office. So it's a really good opportunity for those reasons, but it also brings collaborations and networking, which is really good for most institutions. And so there is, there's been more of a shift towards funding people to go to conferences aside from just PIs. However, it should be seen more and more that undergraduates and especially graduate students are getting their expenses paid for so that they can attend conferences. It's very, very valuable. And even if the cost seems high in the short term, it's not that expensive for, you know, a very, very valuable experience. So it's a good way to develop new collaborations. I have developed several collaborations with researchers that I've met at conferences. It's also a good way to meet potential supervisors if you're an undergrad or potential supervisors if you're looking to do a postdoc. So it's just a really good place to build bridges. Um, it can also inform you or other researchers about what we should be working on. You know, we're working on some project because we were told it was important or because we had some expertise in that area, but that doesn't necessarily mean that that's the best thing we could be doing with our skills. And so the conferences can often provide uh, you to, they could provide exposure to new stuff that you should be working on that you might not have realized was a possible application, or they might cause you to shift gears and work on something totally different than what you're currently working on. And while that can be upsetting in terms of existing research projects, it can make you work on something more important, which is better in the long run. So grad students especially can benefit from attending conferences, and occasionally this means that as a grad student, you'll have to pay out of pocket. Now, it's not ideal. I've done this myself several times, uh, but it's definitely worthwhile. There's some ways to save on expenses, such as booking flights really early, booking an Airbnb for accommodations, uh, and maybe instead of eating at restaurants for every meal, you just go to a grocery store during the conference and do that. Now, it's not that going to be that big of a difference, but it can be a a significant enough difference if you're trying to afford to do that. Sometimes there's also financial aid, uh, financial aid awards available from the organizers of the conference. So for instance, if you're going to a conference in the States, the ACS usually has uh, finance financial packages available for some people to help that cover the cost of attending. Um, and oftentimes there's just other funding agencies which will have these grants available. Sometimes these are institutional, sometimes they're federal, and it's always worth checking in with your university's funding department to see if they have uh, any knowledge of potential awards that you could get to finance your trip. Now, the most expensive part of a conference is definitely the flight and travel as well as the accommodations. The hotel cost is usually the most expensive, but if you're going with other people from your group, you can often get a, an Airbnb and it'll be way, way cheaper. Now, you are a researcher and it's understandable that you want to be treated with respect and you want to have a luxurious stay in a hotel. But if you could choose between not going to a conference and going to a conference and staying in an Airbnb, it's definitely worth staying in an Airbnb just so you can still go to the conference. Registration costs can vary from conference to conference, but in my opinion, registration is one of the minor costs for conferences. It's usually somewhere between like $150 and $400 in Canadian dollars in my experience. However, this is maybe too high given, you know, inflation. So people have been increasing the price of registration too quickly. And uh, there's been some discussion of whether or not uh, registration costs should be decreased or removed altogether, and instead other funding bodies should pay for them. So 
meals meals are usually the cheapest but it kind of depends on where the conference is if you're going to a country where the cost of living is much higher you're gonna have to pay a lot more for meals and so this just kind of is another thing to consider usually as a graduate student PIs will at least cover the cost of registration. If your PI isn't at least willing to do that, that's kind of a red flag that I uh, could have discussed in my Bad Boss video. If you haven't watched the Bad Boss video, let me put a link to that here for you. Additionally, flight and travel are usually covered by uh, some sort of award that you could get for attending a research conference, as well as accommodations. Now, meals you're usually going to have to pay for yourself. However, sometimes if you get a big enough grant, you can cover meals with that as well. I have never personally experienced that, however. So concurrent streams. When you're attending a large conference, usually what will happen is there will be several different symposia, this, the plural form of symposium, where you'll, you'll be talking about different topics. So there can be several different organic chemistry symposia all going on at the same time. There can be analytical chemistry symposia, there can be physical chemistry ones, inorganic ones, etc. So if you want to attend certain talks, you'll have to check in the schedule to see what else is going on. You usually won't be able to attend everything that you want to see in a large conference for this reason. However, in a smaller conference, there's usually a single stream of talks. Occasionally, uh, conferences will have one or two streams. I've been at conferences where there's been as few as one before, and you get to attend all the talks. And this is actually kind of nice, because then you get exposed to different chemistry that you might not otherwise go out of your way to see. Now, that being said, you might not want to hear those talks, and so sometimes people just skip talks to uh, stay in their room and catch up on sleep, especially if they've been attending a lot of socials, and I wouldn't necessarily advocate that. However, it's definitely a thing that happens. So uh, it's, it's definitely worth going to talks outside of your discipline, though, because you never know what's going to be useful. You never know what the next interesting thing is going to be that could totally change the direction of your research. It's only through getting exposed to novel information that you can create new ideas. So I think personally that it's important to attend stuff outside of your domain of expertise so that you can become a better scientist and maybe connect disciplines that might otherwise be harder to connect. It's also worth noting that the most impactful science that's ever done is usually interdisciplinary science. So you should definitely be attending stuff outside of your area of expertise just for impact factor alone. So when you're attending a conference, another important consideration is what attire you wear. And I would usually say that somewhere between smart casual and semi-formal would be appropriate for attending conferences. You can see there's one person here wearing a t-shirt. Uh, and, you know, this is at a social, so maybe that's okay. But uh, if you're wearing, you know, shorts and a t-shirt to a conference, unless they've explicitly said that the attire includes casual, uh, it's usually a little bit disrespectful and it's a little bit uncomfortable for other researchers, especially if you're going with uh, the rest of your group and you're like the only one standing out like a sore thumb. Okay, so uh, that's a thing that happens. And so I got a couple extra tips for you just right at the end here um, for when you're attending a conference. It's worth preparing ahead of time. And so if you're going to be a part of a symposium, whether you're giving an oral presentation or just a poster, it's definitely worth reading papers from people who are attending your symposium. Now, you might say, well, I'm going to hear all about the research when I go there. Why do I need to read ahead of time? Because they're not going to tell you everything. And maybe the stuff that they present isn't their most interesting stuff, right? Maybe they're presenting on stuff that you wouldn't be that interested in, but you could still talk to them about their other papers, which you want to know all about. You might also forget who has done what work. If you are familiar with what work is being done right now in the field, it might be easy to forget who has published what paper. And so it's a good chance to refresh on those people's work if you haven't seen them in a while or if you've never seen them at all. It's also, uh, it's also a good way to build bridges and network, and it's also really nice for the researchers because we usually want to talk about our research. And it's really flattering when someone knows about your research, they've read your name on a paper, but they've never seen your face before, and now they get to talk to you in the flesh. Uh, even for people who are well-known chemists, it's usually a really positive experience when you come up to them and you can tell them about their research, they love it. And obviously, right, it's 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 a demonstration that impact has occurred because they, their work has impacted you. It's a really cool experience. So I would say uh, if you're going to go to a conference for the first time, you're definitely going to be overwhelmed. And that's okay, but it's usually exhausting. So make sure you, like, save some time so that you can actually rest in between talks. And occasionally, if you need to miss a talk here or there just to get some, like, mental rest, that's okay. Yeah, you know, it's it's a bit ridiculous to assume that your only rest is at night because conferences are really busy and your days are usually packed. Occasionally at conferences, they'll give you a day or a day and a half off where you can go and sightsee and whatnot. Um, but sometimes this isn't the case. So hopefully you've enjoyed this video discussing the ins and outs of conferences. It would really help out this channel if you left a like and subscribed. And the best thing you could do to support this channel is support us on Patreon. I don't often go out of my way to ask for Patreon supporters, and many of you have already become Patreon supporters, and I really appreciate it, and it really makes it possible for me to keep making videos. And with that, I'd like to say, have a great day.